It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. And then now we have the most ignorant of times. What's up, everybody? Welcome aboard to Bubba's Bottom Line for Sunday, October the 10th. And of course, the markets are, they're, I guess they're open, but their banks are closed tomorrow, Columbus Day. Uh, in the meantime, uh, what a crazy week. Uh, another horrific jobs number brought to you by this one over administration trying to search for universal basic income, which we'll get into it. In the meantime, this first part of your update is brought to you by someone you may need pretty soon, and that is, of course, Strategic Wealth Preservation. They are my personal gold and silver and platinum and other metal supplier. They either deliver or store. You want to check them out? Go to swpcayman.com forward slash Bubba Dash Trading. That's Sierra Whiskey Papa, Charlie Alpha Yankee, michaelalphanovember.com forward slash Bubba Dash Trading. So in the meantime, uh, we've got uh, President Biden, who is a, has always been an imbecile. Okay, this is not new, and it's not because he's the president. He has always been one of the dumber people that there are, and of course, he's being led around by the nose. Uh, but at this stage in his career, he can't even face a reporter and ask a, answer a question that isn't scripted. Okay, so you've got a leader that the world is laughing at. And if you think I'm kidding, just ask around. If you know anybody in other parts of the world, ask them. They will tell you that the world is laughing at the United States of America as we continue to weaken ourselves. Okay, you know, you can you can say I'm full of crap, which, listen, many do. But at the end of the day, if you go back and listen to my things that I've said over the years, they've come out to be pretty much true. And, we, you know, again, I, I don't know anything for factual, but I can look at what is going on. And I can see that we have given up total energy, which, according to CN, CNN, another imbecile station, okay, they say that it, this could be the worst time for energy crisis. Well, when you decide that you're going to go green <clears throat> and you're going to try to go green at the flip of the switch by pissing away hard-earned America's money and, and giving away stimulus checks and want to increase uh, you know, the universal basic income and do all these things that cost nothing but money and don't create one damn thing. You want a government that continues to throw money into the trash can and is run by the haters of America, the squad. What did you think was going to happen? Okay. You can't stop the use of energy all at one time and shut it down. They already went through this mistake once when Biden was Obama's vice president, when they shut down the coal industry. Those people were not educated to do anything else, and you shut them down in one day. What did you think was going to happen? Okay. I mean, you you have idiots in charge that have no, no information, no common sense, no logic, very much like the Federal Reserve, on how to run an economy, how to run a business. Say what you will. The United States of America is a business. We are in competition with the rest of the world for everything. And of course, let's give all of the power to China who wants to take over the world and is going to have Taiwan, I would say, within months, totally. Russia, which is going to freeze out the Brits. You know, this is, there's their natural gas supplier, one of them. And of course, there's a major shortage of natural gas. Uh, all and all over the globe. Of course, we have plenty, but oh, God forbid we should go down and get it. Let's not take it out of the ground. Let, let's let's not profit from these times and pay back our national debt. Let's not profit from these times while still working on becoming a greener environment when we are already the greenest country in the world. Okay, but of course, our three percent or four percent of the entire world's population. Okay. Is, is, is going to change the world. And, and, and I'm sure that everybody who uses coal, including you know, China and India, are going to just shift right over. Okay. I mean, this is as dumb as dumb you can get. Okay. And, you know, you've got talking about the, the worst time for, for climate change. Of course, Switzerland has decided not to, to back off on their green stance and go into using coal again. 
because it is a cheap energy energy supply. And let's not talk about that this is the shortest amount of storage and energy that we've had in decades. How about the amount of population and the shortage that we have in decades? I mean, think about it from that standpoint. Since I was born, okay, the population has doubled. Okay, well, what do you think is going to happen? Okay, we cannot, you cannot reverse a, a huge ship liner all in one day with one announcement that you want to have green energy, okay, that you want a green planet and a green environment. Again, I have no problem with the theory, but I have a huge problem with the process because we're not prepared. We don't have the power grid, okay, that can handle it. You can already see there are smaller countries that are running out of power. Okay. And if you have to shut down for days at a time. So, you know, listen, the energy transition will take decades, not years. This is not something you can do in five minutes. And no matter if you had the money, you don't have the technology. If you had the money, you don't have the, the, the way to support it. So there's a lot more to it than destroying this great country, the United States of America, with ignorance and stupidity. Okay, look at the jobs number from Friday. Okay, another horrific number. You've got, right now, I would say that 20% of the fast food restaurants can't even open their dining rooms because they can't get the help to work for them. Now, you tell me, is that is that the country that you want to live in, that people want to sit home on their fat ass and collect a check for not going to work? You tell me, if if that's what you want, hey, God bless. Okay, but that is not the America that I know, that I love, and that I've worked my entire life and to build a good life for my family. And now they want to, they want to excuse college debt. I paid 500,000 for two kids to go to college so they could come out debt free. Okay. Now they want to waive debt. What about my money? How do I get my 500 grand back? Okay. This is uh, Oman, Omar and her bullshit. You know, this is again, these are people that truly hate what the United States of America represents. They hate the founding fathers who built this country on the idea of freedom, free to speak, free to do as you want, and free to to do things to, to better your own life. But of course, the squad doesn't want that. They want you to be miserable. Okay? They want to control everything. But in the meantime, well, while she drives her, 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 her $200,000 electronic vehicle around, uh, AOC, you know, she is great with social media, but you know, what has she actually done for Americans? Nothing but destroy any wealth. And boy, the tax plan, which is we'll get to another, we'll get to that another day. But you know, look, you've got the government involved in things that they shouldn't be worried about and not taking care of the things they should. And this has been something again, this is not this is not uh you know just to this administration. You can go back to every administration, both Republican and Democrat, and I would say, with the exception of the Trump administration, yes, I know many of you hated him. <coughs> Excuse me. I know he had a big mouth, but he did get things done. Okay, America never ran better. Okay, America had never it never had more jobs for minorities. It never had a more control of the surrounding powers that want to destroy us. Okay. Never put more people to work. Okay. And never made help people make more money. Okay. Than, than any president ever, Republican or Democrat. Okay. So you could, you can do and say what you wish. And it's certainly, this is still free a country, but according to Facebook, another major uh, group gets knocked off of Facebook action for, I think they're called. I mean, I don't know who they are. I don't know what they do, but I know that there's certainly somewhat of a conservative organization. Otherwise, they wouldn't get bumped off. So don't you find it problematic, okay, that we have a a situation that the, the conservative speech gets stifled, okay, gets censored so that people cannot get conservative views. So as we continue to raise a generation of morons, okay, in, the, in a school system that is designed to be stupid, because again, listen, this goes back years and years when we started with these standardized tests and teaching to the test versus teaching common sense and giving kids something to do 
to learn to use their brain for something other than a, a, a hat rack. Okay. That to me is, is brutal, but that's how the whole high school program was born to begin with. When you, when you have to only study to take the test and you get no common sense, no home ec, no auto mechanics, no electric shop, no wood shop. So sure, let's make sure that we don't know how to do anything. And of course, now we can't even deliver products because we can't build them here because they have priced out with the re- inflation that they refuse to acknowledge. Okay. Now you, you want to think about that. Okay. You know, the, the input costs for farmers are going up faster than the prices are rising. In fact, farming prices have been falling while input costs are going up. That's not a good relationship. That leads, this is going to all lead to stagflation. And, and to me, I got to tell you, it could have, it could be avoided. It could have been avoided. Okay. We were, we were moving along smoothly. Okay. And of course, the idiots in charge shut the oil wells, shut the pipes, shut the frail, the fracking, shut the shale producers, shut it all. Let, let's let's burn the train. Let's get rid of everything so that we can for sure go broke because we'll tax the Americans. And of course, we've got this uh, this 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 debt ceiling debate going on right now. And of course, McConnell and his own inevitable wisdom says, "Well, we're not going to help the Democrats with the debt ceiling." You know that is the biggest crock of crap. Okay, let's let's look at this in a realistic, honest situation, okay? As much as they may he- appear to hate each other when they're out in front in the press, okay, behind the scenes, they're all working together to screw you and screw the American people, okay? This is not new. I've seen this debt thing debate so many times, it makes you want to puke, okay? Because all they are is, is trying to make it so we wipe our brow and say, oh, everything's okay. Okay, but McConnell, Pelosi, Schumer, again, I can't remember everybody's names, but I don't care what party you're affiliated with. They're all a bunch of jackasses that are are, are only out for themselves. Okay, why else would you spend 35 years in office if you were not out for yourself? How is it that these long term politicians, okay, have done nothing for America in their terms? Okay, how is that? How do we get how do we get here? How does a Bernie Sanders who com- companies the, the socialism debate yet has six houses, okay, and it never worked a day in his life? You tell me how you get there. Okay, to me, it makes absolutely no sense. And of course, we'll get to this in our update about the cryptocurrencies and the government and in our market update and in our commentary, we're gonna talk a little bit about some of the, the, the what we call the racism issues. In the meantime. This is Bubba's Bottom Line for Sunday, October 10th. Can you tell I'm pissed off and fired up? Anyways, and so here we are. And, of course, obviously, we've got sponsors that help put this out to everybody and make sure you get it. And, of course, we've got two brokers that we have that we that we vet ourselves, that we use ourselves. Now, I have many brokers. Okay, So, again, you can go wherever you want with me. You can do what you want. I don't. I have no say, nor do any of my products regarding what what, what, what platform you go to or what broker. I don't care. But I'm going to give you what I believe are the two best for what we do and for what you'll do, whether you do it with me or not. And that is for commodities and futures, capital trading group, CTG group. Look, there's nobody better. Okay. They got great customer service. They're not going to be the cheapest in town. They're not going to be the most expensive. They're right in, they're, they're right in the middle, middle part of the curve with George Costanza. Okay. They're not going to be, they're not, they're not a discount, discount broker, but they're not an overpriced broker. They are fair. Fairly priced in the in in with just about everybody else. Okay, so but in the meantime, they've got great customer service. You call on the phone, they pick it up. They they actually talk to you. You don't have to go through voicemail. Okay, they do. They handle all my accounts. Okay, they're the only broker that I will authorize for my letter of direction trading for our, our portfolio members. Okay, for commodities and futures, and they've got great managed futures products on their own. Check them out. Info.capitaltradinggroup.com forward slash Bubba. That's info.capitaltradinggroup.com forward slash Bubba. You'll see I'm telling you straight because I only tell you straight. You know me. I'm not going to lie to you about anything. And of course, for equities and options, you know, I don't understand why people want to pay more when they can go to trade your brokerage for $10 a month. It does, it makes it is makes no logic. But of course, again, if I look around, okay, at the ignorance of what we do in our voting, I guess maybe we don't care about the money. Trade your brokerage is $10 a month flat. Now, nobody can get you at that price, okay? So, listen, 
not only that, they got great customer service. You know, you call them. The nurse, they're not a, a TD or a Schwab, you know, got to go through 95 minutes of voicemail. They pick up the phone. Okay. They give you a direct bone. Okay. Here you go. You're, you're taken care of. They answer your email. Okay. So uh, you do what you want. But in the meantime, we've also got three APIs, which allows us to automate our equity portfolio models at no charge. Trader doesn't charge for it. I don't charge for it. It's part of your membership. The only head, the only software we charge for is for our hedging software because that's not a membership. It's a class. Okay. And if you want to continue and go automation, you can use it and you can buy the software whether you use it. You don't have to use trader. You're going to get the trades either way. But if you want to execute manually, go ahead. But anyways, try.tradier.com forward slash Bubba. That's try.tradier.com forward slash Bubba. And of course, you farmers out there, you know, family farms, baby. Look, you know, I don't just, I just don't get involved with anybody. I, I'm not interested in, I have to be vested in what they're doing and, and understand what they're doing. And they're doing nothing but more than try to help farmers. What a great organization. They're just, they're by far the best and they have your best interest. Check them out. Familyfarmsgroup.com forward slash Bubba Dash Trading. That's familyfarmsgroup.com forward slash Bubba Dash Trading. And of course, our new advisory role in the crypto world as we get more involved in it. And of course, we're now involved with chips. Uh, and that's uh, Charlie Hotel Papa Zulu. If you want to check out the pricing on Nomics, I don't know, about 13, 14 cents. Okay. But I think they have a real future. They got some great, bright ideas, which is why I'm willing to talk about them. But check them out. Mychips.io. That is Michael Yankee, Charlie Hotel, India Papa Zulu.io. Check them out. And of course, our commodity report, Andy is recuperating from just having a new grandchild and also from finishing those quarterlies, which are monsters, and they are phenomenal. And using our algorithms, if you're a commodities person and not using his stuff, you, you should go see a doctor, okay, because you're going to need it. You can get, you get involved in Technomental at, at BubbaTrading.com. It's called Technomental. Check it out. Sign up for it. Take a trial. Uh, and of course, our high school program, Patreon, P-A-T-R-O-N.com forward slash Bubba Trading, that's patreon.com forward slash Bubba Trading. Now let's get back to Bubba's bottom line and my and my market commentary with me, Todd Bubba Horowitz. We're going to go do it right now. Welcome back, everybody. It is my market, my weekly market update. And, you know, listen, it's been a it's been a tough stretch. You know, we've had a tough drawdown. You know, you, you know me, I'll tell you like it is. But at the, in the meantime, look. I believe we're going to, our, our portfolios will get to new equity highs this year. I believe there's a big 20 to 25% move coming in the markets. But in the meantime, this update is brought to you by, of course, one of our brokerage partners, and that is, of course, the Capital Trading Group. And for futures and commodities, there's nobody better. There's nobody at better service. Okay. They're the only authorized letter of direction. Okay. They trade all my accounts. They've got great managed products. Check them out. Info.capitaltradinggroup.com forward slash Bubba. That's info.capitaltradinggroup.com forward slash Bubba. In the meantime, okay, so the indexes, we are short across the board. Okay. And for the second week in a row, Monday was a debacle and got hammered, which is good because we were short. And the rest of the week, they tried to go up. Friday was, I think the markets were confused by the horrific jobs number, okay? But I do believe that the administration doesn't mind it because they have an, a, an agenda to get the universal basic income, UBI as they call it. In the meantime, we're still short across the board. Now, there's a couple that could be close to switching back with the rallies, but the, the Friday sell-off was, you know, in, in some of them is going to keep them short for now. I think you just have to understand that, you know, the trends are the trends, and when they get these chopping conditions, it makes it much more of a challenge. So we're short across the board. In the dollar, the dollar had a, a flattish week, but it looks, it's pointing higher. And I think, you know, again, we're long dollars. Okay. Uh, Bitcoin. Okay. Now, you know, you've got this ridiculous government and not just ours around the world. You know, the central banks around the world want to manipulate currency because they want control of what they're doing. They want to continue to take away your money. Okay by devaluing your currency, okay? And in the meantime, Bitcoin sold off a little bit and it has now exploded, okay? We're long it. It's up at 50, 55, 56,000 and it looks like it's getting ready to make new highs again. Now, they can try all they want. I don't think they're going to be successful at regulating. But remember, the governments, the central banks 
want to control dollars because what they're really doing to you is called taxation without representation. I believe we went to a war for that. I think that was the first revolutionary war. Okay. Uh, and uh, crude, we got, got over 80 on Friday, settled back at about 79 and a half. It's going to 100, maybe higher. This is this is so dumb. I, I, I can't even stand it anymore that we could be, you know, we're paying double. We're paying double for everything and we're making less. It's a wonderful combination. Uh, and the, the, the actual uh, gold, silver, we are short still. They were both kind of flattish on the week. Gold was a touch lower. Silver was a touch higher, but I think Friday's action was very telling in gold. It was up over 20 bucks at one time and ended up lower on the day. Okay. And I said, and I will stand by my original comment that gold is going to take out those flash crash lows of August 8th, which was a 1660 or so. Now, what it goes through, I don't know. And again, I, listen, I buy physical all the time, as you know, from our physical partner, which is strategic wealth preservation, SWP Cayman.com forward slash above dash trading. Okay, but in the meantime, you know, we're short and I don't see any reason to get long. Okay, I get keep, keep telling me it's manipulated, but you know what? If you're a gold buyer and they keep manipulating the prices down, what do you care? Eventually it's going to pop and you want to be in. So buy it cheaper. Okay, uh, copper was a little bit higher in the week. We're still short. Net gas had a very interesting move last week. And of course, thank you, President Biden for, Biden for screwing us here too. But natural gas exploded, got up to almost 670 and came back almost a dollar. We're still long at the moment, but I'm assuming that change is, is forthcoming. Okay. Bonds and notes are getting clobbered, which brings the question. Okay. Why are rates going higher when the Fed is trying to keep them lower? Now, this is the bond vigilantes. And remember, the bond markets, the fixed income markets are the biggest markets in the world. You can add up all the other equity markets around the globe. And add ten and add fifty percent. You still don't reach the fixed income market. They got the money to fire in here. So I think it's just something that you want to be aware of and be prepared for, because at the end of the day, it's it's going to be uh, a, a part of the thing. And lumber, we don't trade lumber, okay? Nor you can't trade; it's illiquid. But I have decided to start to talk about a little bit because it did have a move from it went from four hundred to eighteen hundred back to four hundred. Now it's about seven hundred. But this is a bellwether. Something that you can watch, lumber, okay? Uh, and as we look at the grain markets, you know, listen, uh, they're kind of flattish. You get oh, another another stupid WASDE report coming out this week. Look, I don't know. I think they may have found some bottoms. Certainly, soybeans held at 1240. Now, we're short corn, we're short beans, and we're still long wheat. But they're really in this choppy action, with the exception of wheat, which has been in a solid uptrend. But, but beans and corn have been more sideways, which is more of an indication I may be making a bottom. And in the protein complex, we are, of course, uh, still short cattle, fats and feeders. Now, I would suspect that's changing shortly as they had a very nice week last week and a nice up move. I think you're getting ready to break out. And as I said here, I thought we'd get long them shortly. I was hoping we'd get long at a little lower. But again, I, I, I thought and I've said on RFD that I thought they were going to break out to the upside. Okay. And hogs, you know, we, we did reverse hogs. We are long and they, they had a flattish to slightly lower week, but they look pretty good. You know, it's again, they look better and they're really at high prices. I haven't seen the actual relationship between October and December compared to next year is really interesting and tighter than it's actually been in, in many, many years. So something to take a look at. And, uh, in the, in the softs. Okay. Cotton. Wow. What a move it had last week. And, and I actually said in the, one of the updates that I would short it for a trade, which worked out pretty well. Okay. But it is, it's a dollar six, is it a dollar 10 or a dollar 11? It got the dollar 17. It's unbelievable. It's gone. And again, this is the inflation that nobody talks about. They don't want to tell you about it. Okay. Cocoa, same thing. Exploded. Okay. You know, these are all the soft commodities. Coffee, over two bucks again. Are you kidding me? This is, this is what, this is what has no inflation. Okay. Sugar, over 20 bucks again. Okay. Um, OJ was the only one that was down last week, and we are actually short OJ now. So think about it. Okay. Think about the bonds and notes. Think about all the things that are going on that they tell you to not to, to, to not pay attention to that man behind the screen. Okay. That man behind the screen is telling you that there's a lot bigger issues coming out here between their idiotic regulations and wasting our time and money from the tax fund they want to do. These are all going to have effects on the market. And I do believe that... Look, I don't predict markets, but I am short right now, right? You know, that's what the algorithm I tell you every day what my position is. 
I think we've got a move coming. And I think our models are going to make new equity highs for the year. And I think that can only happen with a move to the downside. That's my prediction. In the meantime, this is Bubba's Bottom Line. It is Sunday, October the 10th. We're going to stop out here for our final break. And of course, bring you my commentary right after the break. Bubba's Bottom Line, Todd Bubba Horowitz. We'll be right back. Well, guys, you know, remember, we've got some partners out there that would always appreciate your your help. And of course, I won't go through all the details because we'll run a little bit long today, but uh, the trade year, you know, $10 a month, we can automate that if you want. Try.tradeyear.com forward slash Bubba. Uh, chips uh, for the our new advisor role. That's uh, my chips with a Z at the end, dot IO. Okay, check them out. Familyfarmsgroup.com forward slash Bubba dash trading. Okay. And of course, uh, CTG Group, Capital Trading Group, info dot CapitalTradingGroup.com forward slash Bubba. And of course, our high school program at Patreon.com forward slash Bubba Trading. Now let's get back to Bubba's bottom line. And of course, my commentary. Welcome back. It is Bubba's bottom line. And of course, every week I do, you know, whatever I'm thinking, you know, whatever I'm bitching at something, I find something all the time. It's just natural. I'm a natural bitch anyways. I had so many things, but I really want to go into the, the racist issue again. I'm, I'm I'm so upset about the whole racist issue. Now, those of you who don't know me, I'm just going to give you a quick background. Okay, I'm a Jewish guy that grew up in an area that hated Jews. Okay, and I was involved in third grade when they started busing. Okay, and integrating schools, which is fine. Okay, again, I believe that everybody's equal, and I believe that you know nobody's better, nobody's worse. I think we're all the same. You know. Whatever color, whatever size, whatever whatever you look like, you, we're all, we should all be the same and every person needs to be treated with respect. Unfortunately, that was not the way of the world always. Of course, we know about slavery. We know, listen, the Jews know about slavery. They're the first slaves, okay, 3,000 years ago. So, you know, look, it's this simple. I think that once again, we jumped the gun, trying to make things to happen. I think we've gotten a lot better over the years. Is there still some racist issues? Of course. There's always going to be. You think that's going to go away? Is there not Jew haters after they try to cook them all in the ovens? Okay. Is there not? Are they not out there? Are there not haters of everything out there somewhere? It is the inbred. It's the breeding of wherever the people come from. And until that changes, you're not going to be able to change it. But what really got to me was Friday, there was a baseball game. Okay. And I don't remember the exact. Jim Cott, who's I think 80 years old. So first of all, say he's 80. So, you know, he's, and he's, he, listen, he played professional sports. He was a pitcher for the Twins, a number of other teams, okay, was integrated, you know, with his teammates and everything else. And I know that there, there's no kinder, gentler person in the world. And I know he said something that had to do with slavery that he had to come back and apologize for. And, and I think that, again, I, I think you have to let people learn for it and not threaten them with their job. Sage Steele from ESPN, an, another one. I mean, Rachel Nichols. I think that that we we get too got caught up on immediate change when sometimes people say something by mistake or it's interpreted incorrectly. Okay, this is I think that the country is moving in the right direction, but now that we want to eliminate history, I think we're moving backwards, and I think that's the bigger problem. If you take the the defund the police and the a mass amount of immigration you're letting going take on, you're really destroying what you want because the party in power right now wants to divide and conquer and destroy. This is Bubba's Bottom Line. Todd Bubba Horowitz, as always, I thank you very much to be here. It's always a pleasure to talk because i got a big mouth anyways. In the meantime, uh, we've got football tonight and, uh, you know, we're, we're cooking. We're on a roll. Okay. And tonight we're going to take hard, hard choice, the Kansas City Chiefs, laying two to the Buffalo uh, Bills. The Buffaloes look great, and everybody thinks Buffalo's going to win. Well, we're going to take Kansas City, and we're going to take them for a couple of pizzas and a couple of six-packs. Right? In the meantime, have a great weekend, everybody. As always, I thank you, and remember that markets are open tomorrow. It'll be slow, but they are open, which is unusual. I thought they were closed, but the option market is open, which means most markets are open, and the banks are closed. Have a great weekend, everybody. As always, I thank you. We'll see you back here either tomorrow, because I will do an update, or next Sunday with another Rose Bottom Line. Thanks, everybody.